Welcome to Demond Does the Six Questions, where the same six questions can tell a unique story. I am your host, Demond, father of two, husband of one, and leader of this here Demondcast. And thank you for hitting play, joining me, and for the reviews. If you listen and like the show, you can leave a review on your podcast app. More reviews prove that you're listening and will show up recommending shows like this and takes less than a minute. Born and raised in the Bronx, my guest is a speculative fiction author. After 10 years as an artist representative and paralegal, he made the commitment to writing. His story, The Stumpville Affair, is included in the horror anthology Exhumed. Please welcome James Goodridge. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I am amazing. <laughs> I am doing great. It is all, it has been really fun to talk to creatives such as yourself and uh -huh. I, I've learned so much just how to forward my career in what I'm doing and also starting to get the bug a little bit about writing myself. So talking to you oh, guys okay. has been yeah, talking to you guys has been very uh, inspirational. So it's really cool. So I'm excited. Okay, well, can can I turn the tables for a second? What what is what is it? Fiction you're writing or nonfiction? Or? Writing fiction. Yeah, I like speculative fiction. I I become okay. a big fan of steam funk and diesel funk and stuff like that. Diesel funk, yeah, that's kind of what I started, but I ended up evolving into another subgenre, which is occult detective. Okay, cool, very cool. James Goodridge, are you ready to answer the six questions? Yes, I am. Question number one. When did you know you wanted to be a writer? That's funny because it was at different periods of my life. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm a what you call a, a reader that writes. Okay, I lo always love fiction, you know, reading, speculative fiction, especially science fiction, horror, you know, paranormal. There's a episode of Deep Space Nine. Okay, I think they did it for, for like Black History Month. And the title of the episode was Beyond the Stars, I believe. Okay, and it's, it's about how um, Ben Sisko he's having these dreams where he's going back in time to 1950s America, especially New York City. He's a science fiction writer. But at that time, the gatekeepers of, you know, science fiction magazines and, and paperback and pulp, they were very selective. So if you were not, if you didn't fit in to what they thought should be a science fiction writer, you weren't getting published and sometimes you actually had people of color and women that were using like aliases or not the plumes, I guess you could say to write. So I could actually say that probably that episode was the catalyst for me to do it. And I would also say watching a lot of B science fiction movies that I love and horror movies, you know, I'm looking at some of them and I say, you know, I can do that. You know, I can do that. And and I also have to say another catalyst was Rod Serlin. Him and the other writers that wrote a lot of the episodes for The Twilight Zone. You know, I was always fascinated by him. Was it um, Matheson, Belmont? You know, all of those guys. It's just fascinating how they turned out stories you know, week after week. How does that inform your writing now? With my writing, I try to put the little twist at the end. I probably say my style is more of a pulp fiction type of writing where I just go for the, the beginning, the middle, the end, and have a twist at the end. At the end. Two things that I try to do is when I write, I usually write the ending first so that I'm not stuck when I get to the end. 
And also, you got to piss something at the beginning of the story to catch somebody's attention. Usually kill somebody off at the beginning of a story. Damn. <laughs> I tell you what, if you ever get stuck for a name, it would be really cool if you killed Damon Thompson at the beginning of one of your books. That'd be dope. <laughs> you know, you know, you, I'm going to tell you a secret. A uh, couple of stories that I've written... Um, short stories that I've written in, uh, again, Cult Detective, I have actually killed off my bosses. But I'll, I'll keep you in mind, though. I, I will. I will consider it, I will consider it an honor because we've only just met, so I couldn't have made you that mad yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, okay, that, that's, that's something to, to chew on, or maybe I'll have your character chewed up. Question number two. What do you wish you had known when you first started out? Unfortunately, I was kind of fearless when I first started started writing. I submitted stuff to Writer's Digest, a couple of their writing contests. And like I tell people, I, I think the people, the editors at Writer's Digest, are still laughing to this day because basically the stuff I turned to was, was garbage. I wish I had known how much fun it gets to be when you get going on a story. You know, it's, it's unbelievable how much fun that I have. On the other hand, I wish I had known how hard it is to edit your story. Okay. One of, one of the biggest fears that a writer has is when you getting ready to press send, press the send button to submit something, and that's one of the one of the biggest fears and anxiety because you hate to send it, and then when you look back at what you've written a couple of days later, it's something, even if it's a, a typo or something like that. <laughs> Question number three. What is your go-to order at your favorite hometown restaurant? Right now, my favorite hometown restaurant is my kitchen. And I'm not saying that because just because of what's going on now. See, where I'm located in, in Manhattan, you can actually eat out every day for a year and not eat at the same restaurant. In this part, which is the Yorkville section of Manhattan, or the upper west, upper east side, as they say, nah, my favorite go-to restaurant is my kitchen, and I'm pure Americana. Give me a burger and fries. Where would you go to get said burger, other than your kitchen? Because obviously, home cooked, home cooked right. is best cooked. But what would be second place? Right. There's a place in Central Harlem called Jacobs Jacobs Restaurant, and why they do have burgers, they, wow, come to think of it, they, now that I think about it, I don't think they would even, see, they have like a buffet type of thing, or soul food, definitely Jacob's Restaurant, I think it's up around 135th and Amsterdam, now that I think about it, that would be the go-to place. Question number four. What are you curious about? In the course of doing research for the short stories that I do, again, the subgenre is occult detective. You have to get into like the occult and the paranormal. Recently on social media, I had posted on my WordPress page something about a real life person by the name of, of Rolo Ahmed, R-O-L-L-O -L -L -O, Ahmed. I also posted it on my uh, other social media page, Facebook, and lo and behold, his grandson contacted me, and we have been in contact. I'm curious to find out more about his grandfather, okay, because his, his grandfather was a very unique and mysterious person, so I've been trying to to find out more about him. In England, Rolo Ahmed was friends with, quote, unquote, the most wicked man in the world, and that was Alistair Crawley. 
he was one for the books too. That's that's enough there in love because the more you research about what you're writing about, the more you come across really like strange and macabre uh, people and places and things. I wrote that name down and I will be doing some research myself at the end of the day. That sounds really cool. Yeah, he's... See, uh, another thing about my writing is I try to, being a person of color, I try to write about what I call historical figures that flew under the radar. Roland Ahmed was risen for the Caribbean. He's one of those people in black history that, you know, people don't, don't know about. That is absolutely fascinating. Thank you for giving me yet one more rabbit hole to go down. Yeah, see, <laughs> now that you mention it, I was going to say you will end up going down a rabbit hole because you get to researching him and then he will take you to in another direction. And then, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a rabbit hole. It, it really is. Question number five. Is there anything I should have asked you but didn't? Well, see, there's there's another genre that I do, and that's what you call erotica, okay, black erotica. It's not your regular erotica. Me and a group of writers, we do our, it's based on fantasy, science fiction, horror. The characters that I do in the regular occult detective genre, those stories, you can find them in some of my erotic stories, like case in point, okay, with my two main characters, Madison Cavendish and Seneca Sue. You can find them in other black erotica. Like uh, recently, we've come out with a with a, um, anthology called Blair Erotica, and I have a story in that, okay, called The Beckwith Affair. And it's, the question is, what happens when you get a vampire, a ghost, and a witch, all three together? As was the character of Monty Python would say, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Could you please tell me about the Stumpville affair? It's a occult detective short story. The two main characters are Madison Cavendish and Seneca Sue Sun Mountain. It's set in upstate New York during the 1930s. They're contacted to investigate a series of murders that, that are occurring up in Stumpville, New York. The thing about it is the sheriff figures that they're right for the investigation due to the fact that Madison Cavendish just happens to be a living vampire and Seneca Sioux Sun Mountain just happens to be a werewolf. This because of an incident that happened back in 1914 with uh, during an encounter with a cosmic unnamed horror. So they're sent up there to investigate these murders that the sheriff feels were done by a werewolf. When they get up there, they find out that things are not what they seem to be. Question number six. If you could create a new holiday, what would it commemorate? Right now, the way things are going, it would probably be national, everybody chill the hell out day. Because I think right now, with what's going on in this country, everybody needs to just take a chill pill. And you walk up to somebody during the holidays and you say, you know, Merry Christmas, you know, a happy holidays, a happy Kwanzaa. The way to greet somebody in the street is just say, all right, all right, all right. You know, like Jim Morrison and, and just everybody chill. Cause right now things are, things are just getting a little bit too hairy. National chill out day. That sounds like a man. We, de that's definitely well-timed for sure. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, you know. Matter of fact, we we have to figure out a day for that. So, because uh, I need that soon myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I hear you. You know, New York has been. We've went from being the nexus to the underworld to being one big dumpster fire to being the wild west. Listen, night for night, we're home coming home from work one night. You know, me and the cab driver were on the Jackie Robinson Parkway. And a straight bullet just cut across the windshield of the cab, you know. What? Yeah. Little shreds of glass flew all over. And I have to I have to credit that cab driver. He had a Russian accent, so I don't know whether he must have saw combat somewhere. <laughs> he just kept it moving. <laughs> Excuse my friend. He just kept it moving, and I had to commend him for that because he didn't really flinch. We had like glass all on us, and when we finally got to my destination, we got out and we looked, and you could see where the bullet cut a cut like a crease or a groove across the glass. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you see, I tell people some of the stuff that's been going on in New York City that I've been witnessing. I'm not even going to try and write some of this stuff because nobody would believe me. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, facts are crazier than fiction sometimes. Like, oh, that wouldn't make any sense. That, you know, you, if you told somebody... If you wrote the story of 2020 just from what we've seen so far, nobody would believe you. No, yeah, nobody. Nobody would believe us. You know, you, it, this stuff, you know, you couldn't make it up. I mean, it's just been one thing after another. It's been a perfect storm, as they say. You know the saying, also, anything that can't go wrong will go wrong. I am so done with this year. Me too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, I appreciate you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a blast. And thank you once again. And please remember to leave a rating and review. So what it does is help drive us up the charts so more people can find and enjoy the show. Coming up this Saturday, yes, a special episode just for Halloween. This special guest will enthrall you with tales such as her foray from poetry to the big screen. Six-time Bram Stoker Award winner, Linda Addison. So, until next time, see it, hear it, speak it, 